Okay, I'm going to walk you through how to add RxSwift to an Xcode project using CocoaPods and then also add a playground so you can experiment with RxSwift in a playground. All the projects and playgrounds in this course have already been set up this way for you. This is just so you know how to do it on your own later. And yes, there are dependency management options out there. CocoaPods just happens to be the one I use in this course and pretty much exclusively in all of my own projects for years. So as they say, dance with the one who brung you. Before I get started, I want to say something you probably already know, if you've been doing iOS development for any time at all, actually. Xcode can be finicky. It's still my preferred IDE for iOS development, so I guess it's just a matter of grinning and bearing with it. Starting out in Xcode, I'll create a new project by selecting File, New Project from the menu. I'll choose the Single View App Template, hit Next, and give this project the name Installing RX Swift. Hit Next again, and save it to my desktop. Now I'll close the project and go to the root folder of it in a terminal window. In case you're not familiar with CocoaPods, it uses workspaces and targets to manage dependencies, so that's why I closed the project. In Terminal, I'll run pod init to initialize CocoaPods and then open up the pod file that command generates. I'm using the VI editor, but you can open this file in any text editor of your choice, such as text edit. Start by uncommenting the line that defines the platform and change it to iOS 11. Now scroll down and add the command that will install RxSwift 4. You're using the opportunistic operator so that the pod file will instruct CocoaPods to install the latest version of RxSwift 4. That should keep you aligned with what you see in this course even if you're joining later, after new updates have been released. Now close your editor, capital ZZ to do this in VI, and run pod install in the terminal to download RxSwift and install it to this project. Open the project root folder and double click on the generated XE workspace file. Now navigate to the view controller file, add an import of RxSwift and do a build. Your build should be successful, but you might still see an error in Xcode that it can't load the underlying module for RxSwift. Oh Xcode, why must you? To ensure that you have successfully installed RxSwift, add the following line to view did load and do another build. You should once again get a success message, and the error should go away if you saw it earlier. We'll get into the syntax used here soon, but for now let's move on and add a playground to this project so you can experiment with RX Swift and really any other libraries you can install via CocoaPods in a playground. You might think that you can just add a playground file directly, and in fact you used to be able to do this, but for whatever reason, now you need to separately create a playground and then manually add it to the project. So let's do that. Select File New Playground from the menu, choose the blank template, hit Next, and I'll name mine RX Swift Playground and save it to the desktop. You can now close the playground. Back in the Installing RX Swift project, right click on the root group folder and select Add Files to Installing RX Swift. Navigate to the desktop and select the playground you just created. When you add files this way, you can direct whether or not to copy the files into the project by clicking Options. We want to copy the Playground file into it, so make sure that checkbox is checked and click Add.
Voila! You can now use RxSwift in a playground. It's a bit of a roundabout way to get there, but it works. There was a solution on GitHub that would let you install pods directly to a playground, but it has been updated and no longer works. To test this out, open the playground and repeat the same import and line of code you did earlier in the view controller. This won't print anything out to the console in the playground, but if you see the rxswift.observable in the results sidebar, you're good to go. However, even though this approach does work, you may run into problems occasionally, such as Xcode complaining that it still can't load the rxswift, in this case, module. So I want to walk through a few troubleshooting steps with you here, just in case. The first thing you can try is simply quitting Xcode and then reopening the project. Doing this and then giving the playground a few seconds to do its thing will usually resolve the error. If it doesn't, you can try doing what I affectionately refer to as the nuke and repave option. That is, and you actually have to follow these steps to a T in my experience. 1. Do a clean. I actually prefer to do a deep clean or clean the build folder by holding the option key down while selecting product clean. Close the project, but do not quit Xcode yet. Go into Xcode Preferences, Locations, and click the arrow to go to the Derived Data folder. Open that folder and delete the folder for this project. If you sort by date modified, it should be open at the top. Now quit Xcode and then reopen the project, do a build, and then open the playground. Hopefully, if you were getting an error earlier, this cleared it up for you. If not, try again. This can be frustrating but repeating the process will usually resolve even the most finicky of issues like this. And if you are experiencing this issue repeatedly, may I also suggest that you file what will most assuredly be a duplicate radar with Apple. Squeaky wheels get oiled first. So now, you should have a project and a playground ready to use RxSwift in. Again, all of this will be set up for you for playgrounds and projects in this course. You'll just need to run pod install and then open the workspace but now you'll also know how to troubleshoot issues you may run into. Next up, it's time to roll up your sleeves and get some hands-on with the bread and butter of RxSwift, creating and subscribing to Observables.